Hello everybody, this is Trisha from Huntress Habits and today we are going to learn a little bit more about the cuddle bug. In the last cuddle bug video, I did some embossing. Beautiful, beautiful embossment. Look at the detail in these. I really love the arrows. And the hearts I wish I'd had for Valentine's. But I did all this embossing in the last video and I started to do some die cuts and I, th I thought my computer had cut out on me. So I stopped doing it. Or my internet, I should say. And so today we're going to do some die cutting. Okay, so let's get started. The only die cutting I've done was when I first got the cuddle bug. And I did the one that comes with it. Thank you, and I put that on an embossed card, and uh, since I did it in the same paper, I was going to put the flamingo, so I need to get some pink paper and do a pink flamingo, and put it on this and make that into a card. I've embellished it a little bit with gelato, and that, that's a fun thing about embossing, is that you can do so much more with the paper that way. So let's get started. I've got some scrap paper here that I've already cut up that will fit. I wanted to show you how I'm storing my things. Right now I'm using just a photo box that I already had. And I used one of the scraps from where I cut the flamingo. And I used some glitter tape and taped it into the lid of the box. And that way I can keep my instructions. I have to keep things close by and be able to refer to them. Okay, here's the thank you one that comes with the cuddle bug that I've already used. And here's the flamingo, but we haven't used the leaves and the flower or the pineapple. So we're going to do that today along with the arrows that I started on last time but never did actually cut. And then I've gotten a few from Hobby Lobby that were clearance. And so we'll do those. So let me get out my plates and stick this box out of my way for right now. Let's see, I need to put the cuts out of the way too. Okay, this is the rubber mat that comes with your cuddle bug, and then you get two B plates, and one of them will always be cut on. Whichever one you put on top of the cuts, the die cutting the, will call, cut into the plastic, and that's okay. It's intended to do that. And then I purchased extra the metal uh magnetic cutting mat because it was recommended and you would use when you're cutting you would use it in place of this rubber mat in the position but we'll set that rubber mat to the side because you still use it when you're embossing from the dies and i don't know how many of these will be actual for embossing Okay, so you put the A plate down first, then your cuddle bug, magnetic cutting mat, then a B plate, okay, then your die, and I think we have the arrows out, so we're going to go ahead and do a few of those. And... Did you see how that just snapped to it? That's because of that magnetic plate under there. It's going to hold it in position. And actually, I think I'm going to do a feather. And then maybe this long one. It doesn't matter where I place these, but if I'm using, let's see, 
purple paper that's too short if I use this one so let's go to some blue paper and place it over there now do I want my texture side up I think so and now if this starts to bend or bow when you are die cutting that's totally natural you would just turn it over and then you would be cutting on both sides but it straightens it out that way okay I'm gonna set these over to this side we haven't even opened our cuddle bug look here when I place the sides down it forms a suction to the table actually to my media mat by Tim Holtz and then I pull the handle out this is for storage this handle would go in and then I crank it this way okay let's get started I don't know what I'm going to do with these dies I just want to learn the machine I'm sure I'll do something either put them in some mixed media paintings doesn't that sound like a good idea or make some greeting cards now you don't have to run it back through here twice but I'm gonna start doing that as a habit just to bring them back in front of me okay that straightened out this B look at that straight it right back out so now I've got a template for two types of arrows and a feather I should have put one down in this space instead of wasting that paper look at that clean that cut okay and we'll set that over to the side now if they stay inside of your cutting die they purposely put holes in here so that all you have to do is take something with a like you could use a pen or anything take something with a point and push it out you see what I'm doing and it'll pop right out oh and that one embosses nicely into that hole I didn't think about it doing something like that so maybe we'll run that one back through and see if it'll do a little bit more and we'll use the rubber mat that time next time okay I wonder if this one had any indentions I believe it did so we'll do that one the same way but now I'm not sure which way the arrow went see it would be this way I think and since those did that this one's probably going to do it too so we're going to leave that in there we're going to switch out the magnetic mat and put the rubber mat on top of them i don't think it matters that they moved and then put the top part of the sandwich there so we've got the a mat the B mat, the die and the paper, and the rubber mat, and then the B. I'm doing that purposely for my own benefit so I can remember. Okay, let's run it through. you'll hear a noise when you're cutting and that's totally natural okay take that one off oh nice see how it embossed in there shouldn't be using this old long fingernail nice went right down in there same thing with the arrow now we've embossed around here 
And now let's poke this one out. Now, something real quick I'm going to show you. Well, I, yeah, let's go ahead. I'm going to grab one of these. Let's do the heart. When you've got a small item like this, something that comes in handy. And I'll think of a... Oh. We have, have we got it all punched out? Yeah. Oh, and look, it's got some embossing right in here. See, that, that embossing is something that you can't do on your Cricut. So that's why you would need both a Cricut and a Cuddle Bug for some projects. And you can find the link to the Cuddle Bug and to the Cricuts underneath in the description of this video. But I wanted to show you how we can stick this on without using glue that's going to bleed out from under it real quick. Let's put these dies back one thing at a time here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and poke these out now. Get all these little pieces out. And I probably should be doing this over a trash can. But that's an afterthought. I have lots of afterthoughts. Loads and loads of them. And look at that static electricity sticking to this plastic. We could use that as confetti. Okay. Where's the other dice? Okay, a feather. We're going to use this next feather on a different sheet of paper, so I'm going to go ahead and get that out. And then put this one up. And we will use this big one next. Okay. And maybe the little one. Maybe we'll have room for both of those, for all of those on my paper. We'll see. Okay, set that aside for a minute. And let's go back to sticking this arrow on this paper. And stick it up, stick it down, stick it around. Let's go with it down here and all we've got to do, this is a Xyron. It makes any small object that can fit into here into a sticker. So we stick it right through here and then we pull. And see how it's pulling the object through there? You want to press on it. You can use a brayer. Or use your cuddle bug scraper. I'm sorry, your cricket scraper. It's always handy for me. And then you want to peel this off. They do make larger ones. But I figure if I'm working with a larger item, I could probably glue it down, unless it did have a lot of delicate spots. Okay. I'm doing that in order to get any sticky that might be around here off. I'm going to trash this. Now I'm going to peel this off gently because it is fragile. I'm not worrying about the, cu the curling because this is now a sticker and it's going to stick down. I may do several of those to put on this.
Okay. The beginnings of something. Either a greeting card or maybe if I put some different arrows on that and then just put it in a little frame. Okay, but that's an idea. You can also find the link to this on my website on the Amazon page. And it's actually cheaper than if you went to a craft store to buy it. Okay, it'll do the same to these. Let's see if we want to put another arrow on here. Let's do it real quick. I know, we're supposed to be doing Cuddlebug, not Xyron. See if I want to make sure my embossing is on the right side. Sure is. And this will be the last one we do. Maybe. <laughs> I don't have rules. Okay. It's pressing, rubbing peel. You're rubbing to make sure that all the sticky gets onto the back. You're taking the top off. Use it to get any of that extra that might be in these little holes. And I see I still have a little bit of sticky on there. So, got that. Gosh, what I would have done to have one of these as a child. Stickers would have been everywhere in my room. And I know you can get sheets of stickers. Okay, we're going to put that one right there. And there it is. Ready to stay forever. Okay, let's go back to cutting. Okay, let's see if this purple is going to fit there. It will. I was hoping for that. And we want to put the magnetic cutting mat in here. That holds them in place. I've got the paper with the texture side up. And I'm going to put the B plate. Let's see. Looks like it's in good shape, shape, so it doesn't matter which side I put it on. Sandwich them in together. And start cranking. That noise is totally okay. Remember that when you hear it. Okay, now really bold it so next time I want to place it a different direction. And here they are. Okay, there's some more templates for things if I want to use them in mixed media paints, paintings. So I'll stick those over into an envelope. Okay, and I want to emboss these. See how they've started right here? So I want to put that back on there this way. And the same with this one. Okay, this way I believe. Okay. Now remove my magnetic plate. And place the rubber plate and then the B plate and the sandwich is complete ready to go back through I don't know about y'all but I'm having fun I love doing something new it's necessary in my life right now to learn new things Keep my brain active. Okay, put the rubber mat away. And there it is, all embossed, ready to go.
Okay, where is that? Hello. There it is. Hello, how are you? And I think that one went this way. I'm not sure. Doesn't matter. As long as it all fits in my box together. Save those feathers. I'm going to do something with those eventually. And I think I'm just going to make a card of nothing but arrows over here. So I'll set those over there. Maybe that went that way. Okay. Now, I'm going to set this in my box. We're not going to cut all those. We're going to do the pineapple. So let's get our magnetic plate back on here. And on in this one, it says it's a cut in emboss too. So look, you're going to have all these pineapple shapes. don't think having that sticky is going to make a difference except when I go to take it off of the plastic. So let's rub it. Now you would think that that die would be cutting my finger. It's embossing it, but it's not cutting it. Probably if I rubbed it just right on there it might, but okay, get all the sticky off. And then we've got the leaves. Again, I'm trying to get sticky off. I may have to do that later. As long as it doesn't stick to my paper. Okay. Now, let's see what color we want to use. Orange, blue. We've done blue. Green. Let's go with the orange. Or red. Orange. For, well, actually, that would have been good in yellow, huh? Or beige. Let's do the, the orange, the small piece. I'm going to put the textured side down this time just to see the difference. Now I'm wanting to put my B plate where it curves this way so that it will straighten out. Stick the sandwich in the kettle bag and let it eat it up. Oh, we're going to emboss, so I need to put that back on there. Nope, texture side down this time. I'm experimenting. Learning through experimentation. Okay, got to remove the magnetic. If I did not have a magnetic, I would be putting the rubber mat in that place. Okay, here we go. Okay. 
Oh, that's nice. I could make several of those. Oh, and this could go on this card. Along with the pineapple. And maybe do some leaves in the green instead of the orange. Put that flower right there. Put a whole cluster of them over here in this corner. But I do like the texture side going the other way. I don't know. Depends on how you want your, if you want it concave or convex. I believe it's supposed to be this way. So I did okay by putting it the, the texture side down. Okay. Yeah, we're going to do some more of these flowers. Different colors, maybe. Do them in red and then the leaves in green. And we'll have a card ready for us. Stick that over to the side. Put it back on. This is a Momenta, just one I found at Hobby Lobby on clearance. Okay, this is the one that I did not remove the tape from. So I'm going to have some trouble getting it up. See, and I didn't get it all off of that pineapple either. So I may need to clean this before I add any more to it. We will see. Okay, there's a good lesson learned. Always make sure the tape is off of it before. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to clean that with some alcohol before we do this larger one. Okay, put that back in the box. Maybe just a baby wipe might be all I need. Let's try that. This package seems to be wanting me to take two. Maybe it knows something I don't. Okay, I don't want to mess up my feather. You know what? That's not going to come off with this baby wipe. Let's see if the alcohol is going to do it. I may have to go get some turpentine. But that's not going to stop us. Because all I have to do is turn it over. All I have to do is turn it over. And then it's going to be facing that magnetic sheet. See? Turn it over. And the sticky now is facing it. Okay, now I'm going to do this big one. And that will be my last one for the day. It's a cut and embossed stencil. Again, a clearance at Hobby Lobby. And I kept walking by it and kept saying, I don't need that. I don't need that. But I went back and got it. This is a Spellbounders. Okay, special tips. Use an extra piece of paper within your sandwich as a shim to give it an extra bit of pressure to help bring out the high level of detail. Use a wax paper between your die and cardstock to help intricate pieces release from the die. When using a Spellbinders die cutting machine, okay, we have a cuddle bug, so we don't have to read that one. Run your sandwich through the machine one to two additional times. And then 
run your sandwich through the where the pressure is the greatest toward the outer edges okay we're gonna see how it comes out and this has two pieces where you could cut an extra piece to go around the die and we're, we're not going to use it right now but it is nice that it is an embossing one that it would actually make a frame okay let's get one of the big sheets for this and we're going to use green oh let's do purple let's do purple purple green purple green oh mess decisions decisions I hate making decisions let's go with the light green okay now, I feel like this might move. So I might need to put a little piece of washi tape on it to hold it. We're going to see. Yeah, it did. So, I think my glitter tape might work okay and it might not be too thick. Let me find some washi tape. Okay, find the end of this. I'm not real big on washi tape, so I don't have very many. I bought a few when I had started in Bible journaling. When they would, I'd see them clearance. Okay, now I feel more secure with that being there. Because that is a large sheet. Okay, put her sandwich in and go to turning. Now this one's taking a little bit of effort. Sandwich it back through. Feel like I have lost my okay look at all those little pieces let's take our tape off see now washi tape is not supposed to stick to the paper like that and it sure did get that a little bit of the paper over there Okay, I don't want to take it too much off. So doesn't this one emboss also? Let's emboss before we move it anymore. Because it being so large, I might have trouble getting it back into to the die. Turn it over. Oh, got to put a rubber mat in there and run it through I may be wrong okay here we go glad I'm not doing this by myself Okay, let's lift it up. Let 
Oh, isn't that pretty? Look at that. Wouldn't that be nice? And then put a couple of blue feathers on there. Or see if I can find. Put purple feathers, purple arrows instead of feathers. And a different color background. Nope, don't like that. There we go. We could do that. That design would work together, maybe. Or even putting a floral de de uh, paper behind it might be nice. I think I like this darker green. Oh, decisions, decisions. It'll take me a while to decide. Okay, but there's some ideas of why we need the cuddle bug also to create with. So that was fun. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And we got some ideas for some cards or just some little framed areas. We've got some templates now to use with some paintings, some mixed media paintings. And We get a trend going here and find out just where to put everything on these cards. Ooh, I like that. And then put the feathers around. And then put maybe a sentiment right here. Right here. Like, tickle me. I like that. Or, put that pink flamingo in there. Make it tropical. With the pineapple. And the flowers. All sorts of things we could do. With this design. Okay, have a great day, guys. I think I've learned a lot today. I hope you have too. Give me a thumbs up if you learned something. And even if you didn't, um, be sure and check out the links below. And you'll see other embossing folders. And I think I have some paper listed in my Amazon store. But most everything came from Cricut. Except for some of these dies that I found at Hobby Lobby on clearance. I'm a clearance shopper. So, see you the next time. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.